Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be talking about some basic aspects of enzymes. Enzymes, as we have discussed in our previous videos, enzymes are nothing but proteins, organic substances which are protein in nature. And we are all aware how proteins are synthesized in our body. Inside the cell, DNA directed uh, transcription to form RNA and RNA directed protein synthesis via translation or protein synthesis. Being protein in nature, enzymes also will be synthesized same manner. Okay, so once these proteins synthesized, they do need modifications such as addition of some carbohydrate carbohydrate groups, addition of some phosphate groups, addition of some hydroxyl groups. At the same time, proteins are nothing but amino acids, and some of the amino acids has to be removed or some parts has to be added. Same way, enzymes after their synthesis, they do need some modifications. Okay, so when an enzyme synthesized by protein synthesis, it is, it is functionally inactive. Okay, and that inactive enzyme is known as zymogen or proenzyme. Zymogen is nothing but inactive form of enzyme. Okay, it is it gives you prefix pro. Okay, and zymogen is uh, like a suffix. Okay. Pro is like a previous form of uh, enzyme, pro enzyme, okay, which adds before to the name of the enzyme, okay, and suffix at the end of the name, okay, that is zymogen, zen, right? So, here what we supposed to remember, zymogen or pro enzyme, both are inactive, they do require some corrections. So, best example, what I can say is like all uh, like our digestive enzymes, like if you take uh, proteolytic enzymes, pepsin in the stomach but initially it's synthesized as pepsinogen okay and chymotrypsinogen is also in active form but the active form is chymotrypsin trypsinogen is in active form trypsin is an active form right so initially they synthesize as inactive forms right otherwise like some of the blood clotting factors like prothrombin converted to thrombin okay proelastase converted to elastase and chymotrypsinogen to chymotrypsin trypsinogen to trypsin, pepsinogen to pepsin. So, like this, initially enzymes synthesize as inactive forms. Okay, they do require some editing program so that they can be converted to active one. Cofactors. So, what are cofactors? So, what the function of enzyme inside the cell? Okay, they mediate or catalyze some of the chemical reactions. Right. So they themselves require or they dependent on some of the substances such as coenzymes or activators here the cofactor term includes both coenzymes and activators so i'll tell you what's the difference between cofactors and activators sorry coenzymes and activators coenzymes are organic in nature okay and we are all aware vitamins b complex vitamins especially so every B-complex vitamin has got their super active form like suppose B1 thiamine its active form is TPP thiamine pyrophosphate if uh, coming to B2 FAD or FMN and B3 NAD or NADP and B5 uh, CoA B6 PLP pyridoxal phosphate and B7 biocytidine B9 tetrahydrofolate and B12 uh, methylcobalamin or deoxycobalamine so these are the super active forms which are functioning as coenzymes so without or in absence of coenzyme or activator no enzyme will work they become functionally inactive right so i have already let you know the differences uh, like coenzymes and activators inorganic substances like ions activator so suppose i'll give you one example in glycolysis what is the first step that is glucose converting into glucose 6 phosphate here we require the enzyme hexokinase okay here the donor of uh, phosphate group is atp is converted to adp and along with that it require one of the activator that is mg plus 2 okay it is ion inorganic ion right so hexokinase require hexokinase require activator that is magnesium ion same way the correcting uh, the link reaction between glycolysis and TCA cycle that is pyruvate dehydrogenase complex it it requires five coenzymes right 
so pdh require coenzyme but here hexokinase is require magnesium ion so coming to epoenzyme and holoenzyme so as we discussed earlier uh, enzymes are protein in nature okay so here protein part enzymes are made up of protein part and non protein part okay so here protein part is known as epoenzyme okay and non protein part is known as cofactor okay so epoenzyme plus cofactor makes holoenzyme okay protein factor sorry protein part that is epoenzyme plus non protein part cofactor both gives you holoenzyme so so this in in this table i have already uh, discussed this uh, factor that, that means coenzymes thymine tpp riboflavin fad fmn niacin nad nadp pyridoxine plp so which are all reactions they involved like thymine requires an oxidative decarboxylation transketolase reaction riboflavin oxidation reduction reactions niacin again oxidation reduction reactions pyridoxine mainly protein metabolism transamination deamination decarboxylation of amino acids biotin required for carboxylation reactions folic acid it's a carrier of one carbon group and pantothenic acid is sl carrier cyanocobalamin transfer of methyl groups and isomerization so inorganic molecules copper iron potassium magnesium manganese molybdenum and nickel selenium zinc so and the list of the enzymes which they require uh, what type of inorganic ions i mentioned in this table so that's all about basic aspects of enzymes thank you